What does a Hall of Famer look like? Is he muscular or wispy? Maybe even fat or skinny? Or is he short or tall? Does he have any discernible physical abnormalities? Does he have all his hair? And if he does, how does he care for it? These are all questions with unknowable answers, of course. But there are as many different types of Hall of Famers as there are Coopertown and Shrinees themselves. And the task becomes all the more difficult if we're talking about future Hall of Famers, especially if we're trying to predict the ultimate status before a guy even really gets underway in their career. But that's sort of what we do when we buy into rookie cards of young players, whether we consider that speculation, investing, or just collecting. Back in 1987, as the hobby was booming in earnest, we really didn't care too much about those labels. We just wanted to get our hands on the rookie cards of guys who would become superstars and eventually Hall of Famers. Some players were easy to pick out. Will Clark and Mark McGuire had played with the U.S. Olympic baseball team and went on to craft stellar college careers. They projected as solid or much better major league hitters. Bo Jackson was a physical specimen unlike we'd ever seen, and he had that raw talent, with at least some polishing already in place to succeed on the gridiron and the diamond. He was in our buying fold, too. All of these guys were big, strong, and or charismatic, even on the cardboard, like their 1987 Donruss-rated Ricky cards. On the mound, pitchers like Randy Myers had the eye of the tiger on their cards and were physically imposing, by the numbers at least. Six foot one and 190 pounds in Myers' case, with tons of strikeouts on his bio on the back of the card. Rated rookies made it easy to zero in on players we thought can't miss, but would any of them become big time stars? All we had to go on was the rated rookie designation, whatever scouting reports we could get our hands on if we bothered with such things, and our eyes. Did the guy look like a Hall of Famer in the making? Consider one case as an example exercise, another rated rookie who had long, scraggly hair flipping out beneath the Chicago Cubs cap, sported pipe cleaner arms and legs that were just a touch girthier, wore a stringy mustache with a big gap in the middle that made it look like he was a high school sophomore trying to flex his newfound puberty, gazed out towards the plate as he pitched with half-open eyes that didn't seem to give a damn. Stood six foot and weighed what, 150 pounds according to the back of his card? Had pitched 31 innings for the Cubs in 1986 and crafted a 5.52 ERA while allowing 55 base runners. How would you rank this guy as a Hall of Fame candidate? That rated rookie status notwithstanding, I'm guessing your socks are still firmly on your feet, not having been knocked off by Greg Maddox's early presentation through his 1987 Donruss card. And most of the hobby felt the same way. None of us took too much notice of the young man who the Cubs selected out of high school in the second round of the 1984 draft until at least 1988, when he went 18-8. and eight. Even then, his cards were still pretty much buried by McGuire, Jose Conseco, Roger Clemens, Clark, and others. But when we did our yearly scan of our personal common bins, looking for guys who had broken out since the last time we scanned, you guys did that too, right? We probably went ahead and promoted Maddox to the box that held Dan Dressen and Mark Davis and Joe McGrain and Lonnie Smith, the semi-stars. If not in 1988, then in 1989 or 1990 or certainly 1992 when Maddox won his first Cy Young Award. And years later when Maddox was a household name for the Atlanta Braves and looking for a Hall of Fame lock, we marveled at how such a greasy young kid had turned into something more. So much more than we ever imagined he could be. It's that long-term journey that we take with our cardboard heroes, from commons to veterans to superstars to Hall of Famers, that make baseball cards such an unbreakable habit. Like the game itself, the hobby is an epic novel that spans generations and allows us to watch boys grow into men, even as we ourselves grow into men. For all its symbolism and its lessons about judging a book by its cover and its significance in the history of the hobby and the game, the Greg Maddox Rated Rookie card is the best card from the 1987 Donra set. Like our video? Then like our videos and subscribe to our channel. WaxPackGods.com